Welcome back to the shop and to the channel. I'm continuing work on the Kearney and Trekker Universal Milling Head. This is called the Swivel Support Bracket and it attaches to the overarms in these two bores on the back of it. Problem is after 80 years of use and abuse that it's developed some cracks here in these thinner parts of the casting. I guess I'm not all that surprised considering this part of the casting is what helps compress and clamp the swivel support bracket onto the overarms. As you were to tighten the nuts on the top of this thing, it flexes that and compresses onto the overarms. Now it might be hard to see, I'm trying to get some light on it so the camera picks it up, but the cracks go all the way through the wall of the bore. I've had some success in the past of using aluminum bronze TIG wire on cast iron, but I haven't ever done it to a piece this big or a section that is this thin. So I'm a little concerned about how this is gonna go. I have tried using uh, regular brazing wire and an oxyacetylene torch in the past and my results were less than ideal. Uh, they sucked. Um, so I need a lot more practice doing that. Not to mention I just ran out of oxygen and acetylene and haven't had a chance to get those bottles filled. The first thing I need to do is prep these cracks and I think my plan of attack is going to be to try to braise the outside of the crack here, try to get it about halfway through and then come back and braise from the inside of the bore meeting up with the previous repair. Well, I used a paint marker to try and define where the crack is and I have a uh, carbide burr in an air tool here and I'm going to try to do a little gouging without marring up the surface too bad uh, and try to get about halfway down into that crack area to have plenty of room for the brazing material. Well, I'm going to try to take this in small chunks here and not go too deep. What I don't want to do is end up creating a big hole that goes all the way through because I think that might be a little bit more difficult, at least for me, to build that back up with the brazing material. Well, I might have gone a little bit deep there on this side, but I don't think it's too deep. I think that will still fill in with braze nicely, so we can try to do the same thing on this other side. Well, things were going great there for a minute, and I ended up making far bigger hole than I wanted. Uh, whether or not I'll be able to fill that up with braise or might have to tackle this some other way is yet to be determined. Well, before I start uh, TIG brazing this thing, I need to bring up this casting to temperature. Unfortunately, I have run out of oxyacetylene and I'm left with trying to use map gas. Map gas burns a little bit hotter than the blue bottles of propane and it will work, it's just going to take a lot longer. I want to bring this up to at least 200 degrees, preferably something closer to 300. 
And I have been very successful in doing this on other pieces of cast iron or cast steel. Uh, but those pieces were a lot smaller than this. So this is definitely going to take a lot longer in getting some heat into this part. One other added benefit of preheating is if there is any oil left in any of the cracks, it does a pretty good job of burning all of that out. That's another reason to get it up to that 200 to 300 degrees. I think a more ideal temperature would probably be closer to 400 degrees, but I don't really think this map gas is going to get it there. and. I'm, I guess I'm just going to roll the dice here and hope that this goes well. Well, I'm hoping that this is preheated enough, so mm. we'll start here with the TIG brazing. I'm using a Prime Weld TIG 225 AC-DC TIG machine. I've got it set on DC. My max amps is about 125 amps. I do not... I want to absolutely avoid melting the cast iron here. I don't want to melt it because that ends up making it hard and brittle. The idea is to bring it up to the melting temperature of the aluminum bronze TIG wire so that the braze will melt and then bond with the surface of the cast iron. I don't want to weld this together. I want to braze it. Well, the braze is melting, and I'm not melting the base metal, but I don't feel like this is flowing all that well, so I do want to increase the amps on the welder just a little bit, maybe up to 140 amps. Um, I don't want to go much more than that, but because, again, I think if I dwell on that, it's going to end up melting that cast iron, and that's something I definitely want to avoid. I can adjust that amperage some, at least with the foot pedal, for when I'm um, trying to braze the thinner parts of the cast. Well, I'll be honest, I am pretty discouraged at this point because it does not feel like it's flowing at all. This is not anything like I've experienced before when using aluminum bronze TIG wire with this TIG machine. It has in the past done very well for me. I am beginning to feel like I may not have preheated this enough, but I'm going to kind of, I guess, go for broke here and keep working on this, which may be a mistake, but I guess we'll find out the further I get. It does seem like the more heat that I put into this, the better it's flowing, which would make a lot of sense. So what I think I want to do is try to apply some additional heat with the map gas. Well, that first side uh, kind of looks like crap. Um, I am going to just let that go at this point and try to... See what I can accomplish here on the right side. I've kind of come to the conclusion at this point that I'm, I, I guess I'm kind of past a point of no return. Uh, I don't feel like anything I do at this point is necessarily going to make this thing significantly worse than it already is. And what I mean by that is I've already gouged out the crack with the carbide burr. Had I left everything alone um, and not tried this at all, quite frankly, I think I'd be in a better position than I am now. But I've already come this far, so I'm going to keep trying and see if I can at least smooth out this, these first two cracks and then maybe reassess this.
Well, the, the braze material is bonding to the cast surface. I just don't know if I'm going to end up with a lot of holes underneath this. So I'm, I'm actually putting on a lot more braze than I should. And I'm trying to get what's there to flow a little bit better and hopefully fill any of the gaps I may have unintentionally left when I was trying to do this on the first go around. Well, I think I'm going to call it for now. Um, what I want to do at this point is to add some more heat to it, hopefully again to try to prevent this thing from cracking into a hundred little pieces. Um, and, I, and I know now that my effort here is a lot less than what it needed to be. I honestly should have waited until I was able to get the oxyacetylene tanks refilled. So once I put a little bit more heat into this, I'm going to wrap this up in a fiberglass blanket and then let it cool slowly overnight. the next day well it's the next day go ahead and unwrap this thing from the fiberglass blanket and boy I really did put a lot of extra braze material on here so I've got my work cut out for me to remove this well I probably could set this thing up in one of the machines and try to mill this off of here but quite frankly this is not a precision surface so it doesn't really need it so I'm just going to use a combination of flap wheels and sandy wheels to go ahead and take this down. It's going to take a while because there's probably a good 3 16 of an inch of extra braze sticking up from the surface and even with some 40 grit flat wheels it's it's going to take some time. Well I won't bore you with watching all of that. Um, it's like watching paint dry so I'll bring you back when I get the majority of this cleaned up. Well, I got all of that extra braze cleaned up and got this smoothed out and I'm sitting back here and I'm trying to assess the situation to see what I need to do next. Well, if I turn this over and we look at this crack from the inside, you might be able to see that although some braze material came through, it looks like it may have cracked again right alongside of where I was brazing. I think that not giving this thing the proper preheat with oxyacetylene was quite the mistake. And you might have noticed when I was at the end of my brazing attempt that another crack revealed itself. There's a crack here on the inside of the bore. That was definitely there before because you could see oil coming out of that crack. So it's not new, but I certainly could have made it worse by not doing a proper preheat. So at this point I've had some time to think about it and I guess what I'm going to say is I'm going to admit a little bit of defeat here. Before I even revisit this at all, I need to get my oxyacetylene bottles refilled and then reassess whether or not this is something I even want to try again on this part before at least practicing a lot. I'd love to find somebody local that I trust to braze this. I just don't know anybody like that uh, in my area. I'm sure they exist. I just don't know who they are. So at this point, I am going to leave it as it is and take the chance that 
when I start using it, those cracks don't get worse. And if they do, then I'll reassess and try and find an alternative way to fix this. But until then, I am going to leave it be and not do any more damage than I've already done. With that, that's going to be the end of this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I must say I didn't enjoy making it. But it is what it is, and I try to be as transparent as possible. Well, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, I do appreciate you watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.